long for you to drive. Thank you. Good morning. I'd like to call the uh, regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. It is Tuesday, February 21st. It is now 8.30. First order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to ask Selectman Bellis Tracy to lead us, please. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Carl. Item two on the agenda is public forum, limited to three minutes on any agenda item. Anybody wishing to address the board? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move forward. Uh, item three is the approval of the minutes for the February 10th meeting, which was a special meeting. Do I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. second. Motion is made and seconded. Any additions or corrections? Okay. Seeing none, I'll move for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Item four, 4.1. Receive a monthly report from the finance director, Mary J. Malavesson. Good morning. Mary Good morning. Okay. How would you like to start off? I'd like to start off with revenue. Um, I'd first like to pass out um, revised sheets for all of you. The only thing changing on these sheets are the total percentage um, for, the, for this time last year. So there's uh, not much new to report uh, other than our tax collection, as you can see, has, has finally came, come up. We've talked about that being low for a couple of months, and we've uh, had a very good uh, time period through, the, through January 31st. Um, and if there's any specific questions, we are 58% through the year and um, have brought in 93% of our revenues, over 89% where we were last year uh, at this time. So it seems like we're... We're doing well. We have a couple of well. departments who are, aren't bringing in uh, what we had expected, but, but others are more than making up for it. And we're ahead of last year. Yes, we are, way ahead of last year. Is there a reason why, or just timing, or...? Timing, uh, things like... Um, the building department is cyclical, depending on you know what they have going, uh, going on. So it's hard to really compare time period to time period without looking at all of the detail. Yeah. Okay. Any questions on that? No, I'm just looking at fire is a little below last year, but it's still. Not holding their own and yeah, doing well, not so actually. Bad. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. I have yep. no. Any questions on revenue? No. Want to move to expense? Uh, expenditures. Uh, <coughs> same thing. Uh, we are at 56.9 percent spent for the year, uh, as opposed to 57 last year. So we're running right at, <coughs> as we were a year ago. Uh, not. Not much to, to say about any of the departments. You'll see that the ones that look like they're. Um, over obligated at this point are mainly due to all the encumbrances that we have for the for the remainder of the year so that's used that percentage otherwise all the departments are are doing very well with their budgets this year and what's not reflected in here is for the engineering and public works is the uh, overtime for February storms right. yeah, February which the last I looked at it was about uh, $25,000 Compared to uh, compared to last year, and uh, and the same thing with park and rec, which was about another three thousand dollars because they you do. Say compared to last year, though, what were the dollars? Uh, I don't have those in front of me now. Okay. Oh, we're good, Jimmy. We're, we we're don't have issues. any issues. Right. No, yeah. considering the way the weather is. Right. Well, you never out. quite know because yeah. of the timing. I mean, we haven't had many storms, but the right. timing could have been. Right. right. So next month, when we report on February, we'll have a really good. We don't that foresee that. any much, no, much better. Absolutely not. No, if, if the weather that we had a week and a half ago would <laughs> continue, we, we'd be, uh, uh, have some concerns. Okay. 
Now, one thing I do want to mention as far as the revenue, um, it looks good now, but don't forget, we're going to be $171,000 short in the state of Connecticut line because of the cut on the ECS grant. Right. Okay, so <laughs> keep that in mind as we go forward. Right. We still have a hold on capital um, yep. for that uh, purpose, and so that at the end of February when we see where we are, uh, for winter, that will give us a better idea of where we stand. Yep. Are we looking, Joe, at like how that cuts can be absorbed? Like whether it be, if, I mean, I know obviously if we have our expenses don't meet, what about the board of that? Is it going <clears> to? <throat> uh, I have not asked the board of it to contribute to it at this time. At this time, okay. Okay. Um, the way it's going to be absorbed. <laughs> is that uh, if you remember was it about six, seven weeks ago, I put a hold on any yep. additional capital expenditures until we see what the winter looks like. Mm -hmm. If we get through the rest of the winter the way we have, we can release the money because right. we have budgeted for a lot more overtime than we're using, mm -hmm. in spite of what I just said about the yeah. $25,000. <laughs> okay? Spent so, 25, but the budget's there. <laughs> it's budgeted for. Okay. But, so we'll uh, be able to absorb uh, it on the town side, is yeah. what you're saying. A couple of weeks ago, we weren't sure. We weren't sure. Right. Thank you. We didn't know what was going to happen. Right. So. I'm talking about this before we take care of But you know what? <laughs> Uh, I was born in March, and my mother used to say March is a crazy month, and people oh. born in March are crazy. So, okay. <laughs> we won't comment there, yeah, so we'll say. move on. What do we say? <laughs> Sometimes I think she's right. May she rest in peace. But anyway. <laughs> All right. All right. Anything else on expenses? Anything else you want to bring to us, our attention? No. So far, we're holding our own. Okay. We are. And keep in mind, we have no contingency here. If we have to dip into the reserve, it would be a reserve, right? No, answer to your question, we will. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Any what? questions on the health report? I see Carl has one. Okay. Want to move on then? Yep. Okay. Um, so, and then we had another uh, very good month uh, with medical benefits, and uh, we're projecting a fund balance of two point one million dollars at this point. Just want to. Uh, Continue to add the uh, or the HSA is uh, for the school is the um, is in questionable as to whether or not our expenses will increase towards the second half of the year because right now the employees are using their own uh, deductibles so that may be why our numbers are down um, <coughs> but until we have a year or so under our belt with that we won't we won't know. Our HR director reminds us at the beginning of the fiscal year, things always look very rosy in the medical benefits account. But he cautions us all the time, wait till we get to the last quarter, right, Mitch? Yep. That's right. The last quarter. Especially of with the, the year. HSA, because that's when HSA our insurance will kick in right. to, they, to make payments. When they meet mm -hmm. their deductibles. Correct, yep. after the deductibles are met. Okay. Um, but at the, at the moment, it's, it's looking great, so maybe we can continue that way. Okay. All right. Any other questions for the finance director? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's move on to um, item five, our police chief, Jeff Hutchinson. 5.1, discuss and take possible action on a request to waive section 214-2. A of the town code to allow the serving of beer and wine during the Guilford Art Center's Craft Expo on the Green taking place July 14th through the 16th of 2017. Morning, Chief. Good morning. The floor is yours. Okay. Uh, really, I'm here as um, part of a policy discussion for the just to make the Board of Selectmen aware of some things uh, regarding the allowance and the waiver for, for alcohol in the Green. Last year, the handcrafts. Uh, was permitted by the Board of Selectmen to have alcohol during their event. Um, what wasn't in place, um, and again, this is really this is really kind of a, uh, I'm making you aware as we move forward because there could be other events that are going to start requesting um, the waiver of this to have alcohol in the green, and so just some considerations in moving forward. There were very few controls, if any, on um, the alcohol that was being sold and managed on the green. Uh, normally, when you have an event like that, 
Uh, we went through this with the, I had discussions with the Guilford Fair when they were considering having uh, alcohol served at the fair. Um, you should really have in place, uh, if it's going to be sold and consumed on town property on the green, um, some sort of control system where you limit um, the age of the people that are going in to purchase, you limit where the alcohol is being carried around, um, and you have strict um, controls on uh, you know, who's being served, how much they're being served, um, how they're being ID'd. Um, the situation we had last year, and you know, the handcrafts fair is not an event where you would expect you're going to have the type of people that are going to be running around uh, climbing trees drunk um, and causing problems. <laughs> but um, I'm just kind of looking forward if it develops into. Um, although I don't know, it's been you know. <laughs> no, no I'm sorry. It, it's a, it's a good event. It's a controlled event. There were no issues last year. I just want to make that clear. But um, there's a potential for issues. So let's say, for example, uh, the way it's run last year, my understanding is. Uh, they were able to purchase um, alcohol, beer and wine, at, 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 the, um, at the table where they do that, and then they were able to wander around the green. Now, all you really have is kind of a snow fence around the event. It doesn't really control, once that alcohol leaves the tent, who's going to get it. It doesn't control if somebody else has brought their own alcohol and is filling their glasses of wine or, or beers and walking around. You don't really know where it's coming from. Um, so really all I want to do is make a suggestion that depending on where the Board of Selectmen is going with this idea of permitting alcohol on the green, that you consider some controls and if you're going to or not, depending on what your position is on it, I, you know, we'll enforce whatever it is that gets enforced, but um, that whatever is in place, but um, it's kind of loose the way it's set up right now. And I can just anticipate there might be some problems. Um, with the way it's set up, and if there and if there were going to be an approval, I would recommend um, that it's coordinated through our uh, support services staff to make sure that the controls that we recommend and that are consistent with other events and liquor controls recommendations from the state on how you manage these things. Um, just just something I wanted to point out to the commission mm -hmm. when you make your when you make your decision on whether you're approving it or not, there may be um, an approval. Um, contingent upon uh, working with the police department on setting up the controls for how it gets put in place um, or not. I, it's, I'm just pointing out the, the challenges we might face. So if we have somebody who's got a glass of wine and they wander up from the snow fence and they're walking through one of the establishments in town or outside of that fence, you know, there, is there going to be, there should be a strict enforcement on that. Um, and then you start giving people tickets for having alcohol on town property when they're just outside of the fence or they're not, when you have controls in place, you can really control where they're going to be doing their drinking, how they're going to be served, who's going to be served, and where it ends up after that. So you're <coughs> recommending, if I heard you correctly, mm -hmm. you're recommending that if this board does approve the serving of alcohol, uh, that there'd be a, a policy in place number one, mm -hmm. and that the policy contain a provision that the alcohol be served and consumed in a contained area within Correct. the event. Contained and controlled with, with those who are serving properly trained at, because the police are not going to check IDs, the mm -hmm. police are not going to do that monitoring. We're going to, um, we're going to be on site, but it's, it's not our it's not your job. It's not our job. Because my understanding, they did check IDs, and you know that the people that were serving. Right. Um, but how do they know where that alcohol goes out? That's what you mean. Okay. Yeah. Um, and again, I'm not suggesting. I'm not picking on the handcrafts because there were no, there were no problems last year. I just wanted to point that out. Um, but I'm just saying, moving forward from a policy perspective, I could imagine if the handcrafts wanted to do it, you might have some more events start asking for this. And if you're going to do that. You might have different uh, audiences and attendees that uh, yeah, you could have a, 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 a different uh, clientele if you want yeah, to call it that. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. mentioned that point last year when yeah. we approved it. Um, would you suggest that maybe we have someone from the handcrafts and somebody appointed from the police department to sit down and draw up yes. a specific plan before mm -hmm. we vote? And that's and that's. Um, it's not a real complicated plan. Um, what I would suggest is that uh, if, 
and if you need to make this decision early, you can make it today and say it's contingent upon approved plans approved by um, the police department. But if you want don't want it to to make it that strict, then we can put the plans in place ahead of time and come back to you um, after working with the hand, people from the handcraft. I think that's a better idea. Yeah. Um, Maureen, I, I see you there. We, do, <laughs> do you want to address this issue? I, I, actually, I do. Well, yeah, that, come on up. In fairness. <coughs> Thank you. I know. I'm Just sorry. identify yourself for the I'm record. I, we know who you are, I'm but for the record, Bell, yeah. And I'm the executive director of the outside Guilford Art Center. Um, I'm sitting on my hands back there. No, no, I mean, I totally agree with what you're saying, but I just have to say, with all due respect, this board of selectmen was, was, was made aware of the, um, we had, we had a, a policy in place, absolutely had a policy in place, and, and we talked about, and maybe we can change it, I'm totally open to like changing it and making it, uh, putting more strictures on it, but we talked about, um, first of all, the, the marketplace um, at Guilford Food Center is, you know, fully licensed. They were serving alcohol on the green in the exact same way and with the exact same, um, you know, legal mandates that they have in their, in their store to serve on the green. And they took that very, very seriously because it's, it's their business at stake. They were, everyone was wristbanded. And we talked very, um, very carefully about the idea of the contained environment. And last year, at least, and maybe this is something we can readdress this year, last year we agreed, or it was agreed, that the perimeter of um, the show itself was considered the contained environment. We had talked about the idea of doing a contained environment within that contained environment, and maybe that's um, something that would come out of it this year. But, but I remember talking about this very thoroughly with you guys, and and, and yeah. kind of coming well, you to have the people understanding. people at every gate, so I mean, we I guess somebody could jump every the gate. fence. Now I will say, well, pe people could jump the fence. Could jump the container. We had said that the people at every gate were going to say it to anyone holding yeah. a, a glass. I know, I'm a glass of wine. You know, you can't take that out of here. I'm not yeah. saying that that would mm -hmm. necessarily, you know, do it. Um, so I. I, we felt that we had a good policy in place, and that's why it went well last year. I'm all for, um, you know, stricting it up so it, so people feel it works better, but I just really, I don't know, I, I just felt like we, we did have a plan in place last year taking very seriously um, what, you know, the, the idea that this was a big deal for us to get this permission to do it. Yeah. Um, the other was thing the I would say is... approved by the police department last year? We were not consulted last year. They weren't year. consulted. That's the difference. Yeah. 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 That's the difference. And, and I think the other thing, Maureen, I mean, yeah. I... I wouldn't have a problem um, <coughs> voting to allow you to serve alcohol beverages again. Um, the issue I have is in discussion with the chief is that uh, it's not your group. Okay. It's not it's, my what? It's not your group. It's groups mm -hmm. that will follow. Is that if we don't have a policy in place mm -hmm. that imposes more restrictions, that we could have a problem mm -hmm. down the road. And um, we, we want to prevent that, mm -hmm. right? So um, we actually, what, but, yeah, what, what I would, what I would suggest to this board is that the police department uh, establish a, or present a policy to us uh, that we can uh, we can uh, vote on and uh, hopefully approve that will put tighter restrictions on the serving of alcohol on the green uh, that we hope you will work with the police department on. Uh, that will be in, imposed upon all groups because uh, there were some incidents in uh, at other events that was brought to my attention that can get, if it happened on the green, can get quite ugly. And we want to prevent that from happening. Now, I'm not saying you know, your group was was fine, mm -hmm. but who knows going forward. Mm -hmm. So um, I think a, a tighter control would be to everybody's benefit, um, and it's not going to hurt your event one bit. I think it's going to help. Oh, it. that's yeah, okay. no, no. So, and, the, so I get yeah. it. So, and, so and, the idea you know, is we didn't talk to you last year before we did. Right. It. So we, I, right, we weren't even we got surprised you, you, by yeah. that one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. And, and so and the, 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 yeah, the chief's uh, uh, concern is that he has to protect the whole yeah, town. Yeah, mm. Absolutely. Okay. So and then. it's a moving forward policy. Exactly. Thing. Uh, but I think the other thing is that, that needs to be known is everybody can't just have alcohol on the green. This was a special. Absolutely. They still have to That's come right. and ask the board. Number right. one. Number two, I think the policy has to be fluid enough, chief, that 
if for some reason we did allow it for another event, there are going to be different events in different circles. I mean, this is a rare instance that we would allow it. So it's not like we're saying, okay, well, every group can have alcohol in the right. green. Now let's put a policy in place. Right. That's not well, the well, case. You can be sure someone else so, will be coming to ask. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. they will. Yeah. But that's the point is we have yeah. to look at the event and we have to assure that safety is going to be met, among other things. So, you know, um, and, think, and the policies that we're putting in place and recommending, yeah. we're, we're not just coming up with ourselves. We've we've consulted no, 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 I understand the that, state liquor control and and the recommendations that they make. And right, and, I just don't want it to be like, oh well, there's a policy, so now I can have alcohol on the green. See yeah, what I'm right. trying to say? That's my concern yeah. that this was a unique situation. But, uh, yeah, there is an ordinance in place right, right now that right? says oh, they have so to. It has well, to be approved by this the board of selectmen. The ordinance is town property. Yeah, yeah, it's town property. Not that. I mean, you're talking Chaffinch. Right. Reserve anywhere. Right. No, I, I know. That's yeah. it's I'm kind just... of opening things up, and that's why. Well, it, potential it, has the potential yeah, to yeah. open things up, so let's get a handle on it before we have an issue. <coughs> that, and that doesn't, yeah, none of it sounds. That's so why when groups like the St. George men's group has their golf outing uh, in September, mm -hmm. they come to the board and ask if they can serve yeah. alcohol mm -hmm. because, it, it, again, it's town property. It's right. not only a degree. You're absolutely right. right. So, um, and again, this wasn't, as I said, there were no problems with the handcrafts nope. last year, so nope. I want to make that clear. Nope. Nobody was climbing trees, yeah, like yeah, you say, <laughs> or climbing the monument. Or right. whatever. Okay. Um, is the consensus of this board that the, we have the police department? Absolutely. Yeah. Is everybody okay with that? We don't need a vote on that at all. No, but that will later review, yeah. Joe, right? Yeah. Okay. Obviously. So, so if we don't, we, our um, approval is, is still down the line for this. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Will you work with the Please sure. on it? Yeah, okay. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> Anybody have anything else? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you. Uh, item six, Youth and Family Services Directive, Lynn Landry. Receive a presentation on the progress of the day coalition and the start of the next five year cycle. Good morning, Good ladies. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> So we <coughs> we you have an we extra one for the Oh, I do. Yes. So, as you know, as you as you know, we had a grant of $125,000 a year from the federal government drug uh, free communities grant um, years 1 through 5. Year six becomes competitive again, and um, we were very lucky. A lot of coalitions have a gap year uh, where they don't get the grant, and we were lucky in that we did get year six through ten. So now it will no longer be competitive uh, for the next four years uh, after this. Uh, after year ten, however, that's it. We, we can't get any more money, and I'll get to that at, at, at the end. This is a very brief presentation just to give you a quick update. Um, like I said, year six is a competitive process, and we're, we've been awarded $125,000 for the next uh, five years for the coalition. Some of our accomplishments over the past five years, um, your, uh, Project Purple, all the purple ribbons around town and everything that we've done. We had uh, Chris Heron a couple of years ago speaking at the high school, which was very effective. Uh, and what we've instituted is uh, a day week every year now. Um, last year we had a 5K color run, uh, which was very successful, uh, just to promote uh, you know, helping kids not use substances uh, as well as adults. Uh, one of our big accomplishments, uh, and this was youth-led, uh, and I believe that the, the results were because the youth were involved, uh, was that uh, planning and zoning changed its, um, uh, its codes, if you want, about not allowing medical marijuana dispensaries and no production facilities in Guilford, and that was huge. And some of the other towns in Connecticut had used us as an example to be able to do that. Having that said, we're not saying that we're against medical marijuana, we're just saying that uh, we want to make sure that we project a good image for, for our kids in town. Um, and if people need that, there's a facility in Branford. Uh, some of the other things that we do, and this is just the, the very small tip of the iceberg, um, we collaborate with the police department, we collaborate with Parks and Rec, uh, we collaborate with the, the faith community, and, um, and a lot of, with the library. Uh, we do things like early dismissal activities for the, for the kids when uh, school is let out early. Uh, rec the past couple, we've had 100 kids plus attending, which is fantastic. Um, 
the spectacular, the big Halloween uh, <laughs> event that we do uh, this year, uh, we had over a thousand people. Uh, the streets were, were jammed. It was it was quite an event. It was it was a lot of fun. And it was great to see the kids. Uh, like I said, that's just the tip of the iceberg of what we do. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the data real quickly, and I'm going to mm -hmm. turn it over to Carolyn. Carolyn Regan is our program director at Youth and Family Services. She's also the program director for um, the grant. And I was remiss. Robin Snyder is our new uh, pro. Uh, Prevention, Prevention coordinator. coordinator. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. Um, so we work with the schools um, on a regular basis, but every other year we do a search institute survey and we survey the kids um, in grades 7 through 12. And we're thrilled to bring this data to you today because um, as you take a look at it, you can see the 30-day use rates for alcohol, cigarettes, marijuana, and prescription drugs have dramatically decreased since 2010 when we started with the grant. Um, we're not surprised with the perception of risk of marijuana. As you can see, um, in 2010, it was 77 percent, and the perception of risk now it shows 68 percent. So the risk, the perception of risk in the kids has gone down, and that's really what we're working hard on now to, you know, be able to increase that. Um, and you know, obviously, we're up against you know the whole legalization issue, and kids are seeing that, and they're seeing that it's not an issue. Um, and perception of parental disapproval, um, you can see, has improved um, over the course from 2010 to 2016. And perception of peer disapproval has also um, improved. Uh, we didn't have the data um, in 2010 for that particular section. Um, but as you can see, from 2012 to 16, um, it's all improved. So we're looking at improvements across the board other than perception of harm in the kids' views. So what's next for us? The big, our big push right now is, um, and this is totally led by the coalition. Uh, they've been very active, and very busy in the campaign against legalization of non-medicinal marijuana. Uh, we launched a major campaign to educate legislators. Uh, we cannot lobby because we receive federal money, but we can educate. So we've been doing a lot of that, and the kids have been doing it actually. Uh, they bombarded them with emails and written materials. Uh, we've enlisted the help of Senator Kennedy, Representative Scandalora uh, Scanlon, uh, Dr. Pettit, uh, as well as Dr. Nyhoff, who's the Executive Director of the Connecticut Association of Schools. Uh, Dr. Nyhoff is enlisting the help of 900 Connecticut school principals. Uh, Day Youth is applying for a $5,000 grant to produce a video on Project Purple Day Week to help other students in starting these campaigns in their schools. Um, I mean, we were supposed to have a press conference and it's rescheduled. To it's rescheduled. Up um, at the Capitol. Within the next couple of weeks, yeah. Uh, at the press conference, the speakers will be Dr. Nyhoff, uh, Representative Candelora, and Dr. D'Souza, who's a Guilford neurologist researcher, and we just recently held a forum at the community center that was really well attended uh, on this topic. Andy Bucaro, who uh, is the executive director of Project Courage, he'll speak on addiction and recovery, and we're hoping to have a police chief talk about DWI fatalities and decriminalization. Uh, one of the, and just quickly, one of the myths around uh, uh, legalizing uh, marijuana is that will incarcerate more people and if you talk to police officers it's not true. Uh, hardly anybody is incarcerated because they had uh, marijuana on mm -hmm. them. Uh, but the DWI fatalities are increasing uh, and um, kids think that it's okay to smoke uh, because they're not drinking and driving, they're smoking. Uh, and we, uh, we're seeking support, and I think we've gotten it from the Connecticut Association of Prevention Specialists, uh, AAA, American Academy of Pediatrics, and the Association for Boards of Education, the superintendents and chiefs of police. The <laughs> chiefs of police are holding back a little bit um, because they don't... Uh, yeah. I think they want to see the bills right. on the table first right. before they make any judgments. Is Matt involved? I know it's strong driving, but I would think they would be. Yeah, we, we do work with them, and they're part of the production. Yeah, I would think they would be. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So what's next? Um, sustainability. What we'll be working on over the next four or five years is to sustain all of the work that we've been doing. And I think one of the reasons that we were successful in getting year six is that we had a good plan for sustainability. If the money were to dry up today, could we sustain all of these programs? 
and we could. We'd have to look for some more money uh, for some of them, but, um, but we have a good plan. And one of the reasons we do is because our youth are involved, our families and our stakeholders, uh, um, the Board of Selectmen, the Board of Education, uh, the faith communities. Uh, we have a lot of stakeholders who are very interested in making um, you know, life better for our kids. Um, so you have this and you have the data that was included in one of the slides. And then I, did, I included the quick facts on marijuana uh, because in there there are some very valuable links about the, um, what's happened in Colorado. Uh, all the studies are in there and the, and the facts uh, as opposed to the myths that people are promoting. Um, so I hope that that's helpful. Uh, and I thank you for your time. And the main reason that they're trying to <laughs> legalize it in this state is purely financial. Right, which didn't work in Colorado. No, no. no and they no. also have an increase in car accidents, yeah. and you can't test right away, so right. it's yeah. like, at least from a legal perspective, it's a harder, right. it's a whole. It's increased costs for mental health issues, yeah. um, everything. So it, yeah. it's not true. And, and my answer to financial argument is to just better management in the yeah. state. That's yeah. right. <laughs> I agree with you. All right, not, not more taxes. <laughs> right, yeah, that's management. right. I think right. that whole argument is Looney Tunes. <laughs> <laughs> that's where it comes from. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Thank, yeah. you, thank you very much. Very <laughs> I had a oh, typo. Yeah. Here. Typo. Thank you, yeah. thank you Principal yeah. Balustrade. <laughs> <laughs> Item 7, Town Engineer Jim Portley. Mr. Portley, consider and take possible action to appoint a consultant uh, selection panel for the Sawmill River Bridge project. Good morning. Good morning. You, all you have your intellectual look this morning. Huh? Oh, should I take my glasses off? <laughs> <laughs> I, I put them on just to look smart. Uh, you see, yeah. it never looks intellectual. <laughs> um, as we've done in the past, we, uh, we have to, if we get a federal grant, we have to uh, go through the process of selecting a consultant. The DOT process is what they call quality-based selection, QBS. It requires that we set up a panel to interview consultants. We already have published uh, an advertisement. We have received 15 replies back for engineering consultant to design a bridge. We are at the process now where we should be select, culling through those 15, selecting four or five for interview, and then selecting consultant. That process requires us to have an interview panel. I would recommend just like, this is the same panel we had for uh, Long Hill Road. Myself, George Kroll, Tom Fillion, and Mark Damiani. Uh, we're all familiar with the field. Uh, it, I think it's a, it's, it's a strong panel, so I, I recommend the Board of Selectmen appoint it as the uh, selection panel for uh, for the uh, Sawmill Road Bridge. We have a so you need a motion? Oh, I need a motion? Well, yeah. Unless there's what we can discuss. Move that we appoint uh, a consultant selection panel of uh, Jim Portley, George Kroll, Tom Fillion, and Mark uh, Damiani for the Sawmill Road Bridge Project. Second. Motion to remain <laughs> second. Any discussion? Call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two votes? Yeah, aye. Okay, my glass is back. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Motion's complete. Okay. We'll move on. Um, item eight, request for the use of town properties. I think we have two. Um, 8.1 and 8.2. Do I have a motion, please? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Uh, correspondence. I have uh, two. The building officials monthly report and uh, the public works uh, department monthly report. In your packet, any comments, questions? Okay. So then we'll move on. Okay. Nobody? Okay. Oh, business. Uh, just to remind the seniors. Uh, want to apply for the uh, tax freeze program the application began on application process began on February 1st and uh, will run through May uh, 15th uh, 
So if you are a part of the program or have been, you have to reapply. If you want to get into the program, you have to apply uh, every year. Just go down and see the assessor. New business, uh, just a word uh, on the uh, water project down in Mulberry and Tuttle's Point. The uh, Connecticut Water Company has now sent out uh, the information and uh, applications and agreements to all residents, all 145 residents in those two, oh, and three communities, Long Cove, I forgot about that, uh, and they should respond no later than, uh, I think it was April 3rd. Uh, so if residents watching this uh, tape, uh, if you haven't gotten your information from the water company, please contact Dennis Johnson. And uh, by the way of other information, we did secure all the easements. Uh, once you uh, respond to the water company, uh, then we will begin the process of having a town meeting and uh, schedule a referendum sometime in May. We can, based on a referendum, we can proceed with the project. That's pretty much it. That's all I have on new business then. Public forum limited to three minutes or any item. Anybody wishing to address the board? Don't see any. Okay. I have uh, item uh, 13 discuss and take possible action on the Ar Army Corps of Engineers. Potential claim and executive session uh, will be required. Okay, come so, um, <clears throat> sorry, I was okay. going to move, but go ahead. Okay. Uh, Invite the uh, our in-house counsel and our town engineer. Okay. Can I have a motion, please. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mike, we'll come back for a vote. Thank you. Gentlemen, head to court now. So to okay. Me. Yeah. All right. I keep, we need a vote to come out first. Okay. Pam, can I see you afterwards? Okay. Another issue. Oh, we we need a uh, vote to come out of executive session. So move. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Okay. We have one more uh, item to deal with on item uh, thirteen. Please. We have a oh, motion. I, I'll make a motion that we authorize the first selectman to enter into necessary agreements with the Army Corps. Second. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. No further business. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Well, so now we probably, uh, this week we got meetings with uh, the COT on starting the Longhill Road project. Good. We got the uh, two construction meeting with the utilities on Thursday.